सी आई टी एन सी आर टी प्रेजेंट्स ऑडियो बुक फुटप्रिंट्स विदाउट फीट सप्लीमेंट्री रीडर इन इंग्लिश फॉर क्लास टेन फ्रेंड्स नाउ लेट एस लिसन टू चैप्टर नाइन टाइटल इज भोली पेज फिफ्टी फोर चैप्टर नाइन भोली Now let's have a look in the box which is given at the top of this chapter and it says from her very childhood Bholi was neglected at home why did her teacher take special interest in her did Bholi measure up to her teacher's expectations some points for you to ponder read and find out why is Bholi's father worried about her Two, for what unusual reasons is Bholi sent to school? Now the text. Her name was Sulekha, but uh, since her childhood, everyone had been calling her Bholi, the simpleton. She was the fourth daughter of Number Dar Ramlal. When she was ten months old, she had fallen off the cot on her head, and perhaps. it had damaged some part of her brain that was why she remained a backward child and came to be known as bholi the simpleton at birth the child was very fair and pretty but when she was 2 years old she had an attack of smallpox only the eyes were saved but the entire body was permanently disfigured by deep black pock marks little sulekha could not speak till she was 5 and when at last she learnt to speak she stammered the other children often made fun of her and mimicked her as a result she talked very little ramlal had seven children three sons and four daughters and the youngest of them was bholi it was a prosperous farmer's household and uh, there was plenty to eat and drink all the children except bholi were healthy and strong the sons had been sent to the city to study in schools and later in colleges of the daughters radha the eldest had already been married the second daughter mangla's marriage had also been settled and when that was done ramlal would think of the third champa they were good looking healthy girls and it was not difficult to find bright grooms for them but ramlal was worried about bholi she had neither good looks nor intelligence page 55 At the top of this page we have the picture of Bholi's house father is sitting and the sisters as well with mother now the text Bholi was 7 years old when Mangla was married the same year a primary school for girls was opened in their village the tehsildar sahib came to perform its opening ceremony he said to ramlal as a revenue official you are the representative of the government in this village and so you must set an example to the villagers you must send your daughter to school that night when ramlal consulted his wife she cried are you crazy if girls go to school who will marry them but ramlal had not the courage to disobey the tehsildar at last his wife said I will tell you what to do send bholi to school as it is there a little chance of her getting married with her ugly face and lack of sense let the teachers at school worry about her read and find out now the question comes does bholi enjoy her first day at school the text is going to tell us later and the second curiosity that is does she find her teacher different from the people at home now the text 
पेज नंबर 56। द नेक्स्ट डे रामलाल कॉट भोली बाय द हैंड एंड सेड कम विद मी आई विल टेक यू टू स्कूल भोली वॉज फ्राइटेंड शी डिड नॉट नो वॉट अ स्कूल वॉज लाइक She remembered how a few days ago their old cow Lakshmi had been turned out of the house and sold. Mm, no, 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 no! She shouted in terror and pulled her hand away from her father's grip. What's the matter with you, you fool? Shouted Ramlal. I am only taking you to school. Then he told his wife. Let her wear some decent clothes. Then he told his wife, "Let her wear some decent clothes today, or else, uh, what will the teachers and the other schoolgirls think of us when they see her?" New clothes had never been made for Bholi. The old dresses of her sisters were passed on to her. No one cared to mend or wash her clothes. But today she was lucky to receive a clean dress. which had shrunk after many washings and no longer fitted champa she was even bathed and oil was rubbed into her dry and matted hair only then she began to believe that she was being taken to a place better than her home when they reached the school the children were already in their classrooms ramlal handed over his daughter to the headmistress left alone the poor girl looked about her with fear laden eyes there were several rooms and in each room girls like her squatted on mats reading from books or writing on slates the headmistress asked bholi to sit down in a corner in one of the classrooms page 57 bholi did not know what exactly a school was like and uh, what happened there but she was glad to find so many girls almost of her own age present there she hoped that uh, one of these girls might become her friend a lady teacher who was in the class was saying something to the girls but bholi could understand nothing she looked at the pictures on the wall the colors fascinated her The horse was brown just like a horse on which the tehsildar had come to visit their village. The goat was black like the goat of their neighbor. The parrot was green like the parrot she had seen in the mango orchard. And the cow was just like their Lakshmi. And suddenly Bholi noticed that the teacher was standing by her side smiling at her. What's your name, little one? B b b b. She could stammer no further than that. Then she began to cry, and tears flowed from her eyes in a helpless flood. She kept her head down as she sat in her corner, not daring to look up at the girls who she knew were still laughing at her. When the school bell rang, all the girls scurried out. of the classroom but bholi dared not to leave her corner her head still lowered she kept on sobbing bholi the teacher's voice was so soft and soothing in all her life she had never been called like that it touched her heart get up said the teacher it was not a command but just a friendly suggestion bholi got up now tell me your name sweat broke out her whole body would her stammering tongue again disgrace her for the sake of this kind woman however she decided to make an effort she had such a soothing voice she would not laugh at her b b bho bho she began to stammer well done well done the teacher encouraged her come on now the full name b b bho bholi at last she was able to say it and felt relieved as if it was a great achievement well done 
The teacher patted her affectionately and said, Put the fear out of your heart and you will be able to speak like everyone else. Bholi looked up as if to ask, Really? Page 58 Yes, yes, it will be very easy. You just come to school every day. Hmm? Will you come? Bholi nodded. No, say it aloud. Ye, ye, yes. And Bholi herself was astonished that she had been able to say it. Didn't I tell you? Now take this book. The book was full of nice pictures and the pictures were in color. Dog, cat, goat, horse, parrot, tiger and a cow just like Lakshmi. And with every picture was a word in big black letters. In one month, you will be able to read this book. Then I will give you a bigger book, okay? Then still bigger one. In time, you will be more learned than anyone else in the village. Then no one will ever be able to laugh at you. People will listen to you with respect and you will be able to speak without a slightest stammer. Understand? Now go home and come back early tomorrow in the morning. Bholi felt as if suddenly all the bells in the village temple were ringing and the trees in front of the schoolhouse had bloomed into big red flowers. Her heart was throbbing with a new hope and a new life. Read and find out. Point 1. Why do Bholi's parents accept Bishambhar's marriage proposal? 2. Why does the marriage not take place? Now, let's go to the text. Thus the year passed. The village became a small town. A little primary school became a high school. There were now a cinema under a tin shed and a cotton ginning mill. The mail train began to stop at their railway station. One night after dinner, Ramlal said to his wife, Then uh, shall I accept Bishambhar's proposal? Yes, yes, certainly, his wife said. Bholi will be lucky to get such a well-to-do bridegroom, a big shop, a house of his own, and I hear several thousand in the bank. Moreover, he is not asking for any dowry. That's right, but uh, he is not so young, you know, almost the same age as I am. And he also limps. Moreover, the children from his first wife are quite grown up. Page 59 So what does it matter? His wife replied. Forty-five or fifty? It is no great age for a man. We are lucky that he is from another village and does not know about her poke marks and her lack of sense. If we don't accept this proposal, she may remain unmarried all her life. Yes, but uh, I wonder what Bholi will say. What will that witless one say? She is like a dumb cow. Maybe you are right, muttered Ramlal. In the other corner of the courtyard, Bholi lay awake on her coat, listening to her parents' whispered conversation. Bishambhar Nath was well-to-do grocer. He came with a big party of friends and relations with him for the wedding. A brass band playing a popular tune from an Indian film headed the procession with the bridegroom riding a decorated horse. Ram Lal was overjoyed to see such pomp and splendor. He had never dreamt that his fourth daughter would have such a grand wedding. Bholi's elder sisters who had come for the occasion were envious of her luck. Bholi, clad in a red silk and bridal dress, was led to the bride's place near the sacred fire. Garland, the bride, 
one of his friends prompted Bishambharnath. The bridegroom lifted the garland of yellow marigolds. A woman slipped back the silken veil from the bride's face. Bishambhar took a quick glance. The garland remained poised in his hands. The bride slowly pulled down the veil over her face. Have you seen her? said Bishambhar to his friend next to him. She has pock marks on her face. So what? You are not young either? Maybe, but uh, if I am to marry her, her father must give me 5,000 rupees. Ramlal went and placed his turban, his honor, at Bishambhar's feet. Do not humiliate me so. Take 2,000 rupees. No, 5,000. Or we go back. Keep your daughter. Be a little considerate, please. If you go back, I can never show my face in the village. Then out with 5,000. Tears streaming down his face, Ramlal went in, opened the safe and counted out the notes. He placed the bundle at the bridegroom's feet. Page 60 On Bishambhar's greedy face appeared a triumphant smile. He had gambled and won. Give me the garland, he announced. Once again, the veil was slipped back from bride's face. But this time, her eyes were not downcast. She was looking up, looking straight at her prospective husband. And in her eyes, there was neither anger nor hate, only cold contempt. Bishambha raised the garland to place it round the bride's neck. But before he could do so, Bholi's hands struck like a streak of a lightning and the garland was flung into the fire. She got up and threw away the veil. Pitaji, said Bholi in a clear, loud voice. And her father, mother, sisters, brothers, relations and neighbors were startled to hear her speak without even the slightest stammer. Pitaji, take back your money. I am not going to marry this man. Page 61 Ramlal was thunderstruck. The guests began to whisper. So shameless. So ugly and so shameless. Bholi, are you crazy? shouted Ramlal. You want to disgrace your family? Have some regard for our Izzat. For the sake of your Izzat said Bholi, I was willing to marry this lame old man. But I will not have such a mean, greedy and contemptible coward as my husband. I want, I want, I want. What a shameless girl. We all thought she was a harmless dumb cow. Bholi turned violently on the old woman. You all thought that I was a dumb, driven cow. That's why... You wanted to hand me over to this heartless creature. But now the dumb cow, the stammering fool is speaking. Do you want to hear more? Bishambharnath, the grocer, started to go back with his party. The confused bandsman thought this was the end of the ceremony and struck up a closing song. Ramlal stood rooted to the ground. His head bowed low with the weight of grief and shame. The flames of the sacred fire slowly died down. Everyone was gone. Ramlal turned to Bholi and said, But what about you? No one will ever marry you now. What shall we do with you? And Sulekha said in a voice that was calm and steady, Don't you worry, Pitaji. In your old age, I will serve you and mother. And I will teach the same school where I learned so much. Isn't that right, ma'am? The teacher had all along stood in a corner, watching the drama. Yes, Bholi, of course, she replied. And in her smiling eyes was a light of deep satisfaction that an artist feels when contemplating the completion of her masterpiece. The story by K.A. Abbas. Glossary. Simplation means a foolish person 
easily tricked by others. Number Dar, an official who collects revenue. Matted means entangled. Squatted means sat on their heels. Scurried, ran or moved hurriedly. Ginning, separating raw cotton from its seeds. Downcast, looking downwards. Page 62. Think of it. 1. Bholi had many apprehensions about going to school. What made her feel that she was going to a better place than her home? 2. How did Bholi's teacher play an important role in changing the course of her life? Question 3. Why did Bholi at first agree to an unequal match? Why did she later reject the marriage? What does this tell us about her? 4. Bholi's real name is Sulekha. We are told this right at the beginning. But only in the last but one paragraph of the story is Bholi called Sulekha again. Why do you think she is called Sulekha at that point in the story? 5. Bholi's story must have moved you. Do you think girl children are not treated at par with boys? You are aware that the government has introduced a scheme to save the girl child as the sex ratio is declining. The scheme is called Beti Bachao, Beti Pahao, Save the Girl Child. Read about the scheme and design a poster in groups of four and display on the school notice board. Talk about it. 1. Bholi's teacher helped her overcome social barriers by encouraging and motivating her. How do you think you can contribute towards changing the social attitude illustrated in this story? 2. Should girls be aware of their rights and assert them? Should girls and boys have the same rights, duties and privileges? What are some of the ways in which society treats them differently? When we speak of human rights, do we differentiate between girls' rights and the boys' rights? 3. Do you think the characters in this story were speaking to each other in English? If not, in which language were they speaking? You can get clues from the names of the persons and the non-English words used in the story. Suggested reading Read The Brass Gong by Kazi Abdul Sattar Number 2. Read Old Man at the Bridge by Ernest Hemingway. Number 3. Gandhiji, the Teacher by Rajkumari Amrit Kaur. You were just listening to Footprints Without Feet, Supplementary Reader in English for Class 10. Production Assistance, Soumya Malik. Read and produced by Ajit Horo. This audiobook is presented to you by CIET, NCERT, New Delhi, India.